In the mid-1600s, the Italian physiologist Giovanni Alfonso Borelli confirmed earlier findings that the vessels connecting the heart and lungs were filled with blood, not air. From this he concluded that breathing did not cool the fire in the heart, as Galen had suggested. Borelli wondered about the function of the lungs and concluded that, quote, so great a machinery of vessels and organs of the lungs must have been instituted for some grand purpose. This grand purpose had even eluded Harvey. It was now clear that all of the blood leaving the right side of the heart passed through the lungs and returned to the left side of the heart. In contrast to ancient theories in which air was sent to the heart to be mixed with blood, a new view emerged blood was sent to the lungs to be mixed with air. But why? An English physiologist by the name of Richard Lower set out to discover the relationship between blood and air. He knew that blood entering the heart was blue, or purple, while blood leaving the heart was red. According to ancient theories, this color change took place in the heart itself, where air was present. It was also this color difference that supported the uh, Galen's views that there were two different sorts of blood and different systems that contained them. One obvious hypothesis presented itself to account for the color change of blood. Perhaps blood changes color when mixed with air in the lungs. Now, if we simply open the chest to observe the color change as blood travels through the lungs, this does not test the hypothesis. We, we won't know if blood changes colors because of its mixture with air or because of something else that happens along the way. Perhaps blood moving through the lung itself causes the color change. Maybe both events could cause the color change. What Lower needed to do was block the suspected cause of the color change. He needed to block A to see if B happens. He did this by observing the color of blood while suffocating an animal. The reasoning is as follows. If air in the lungs causes blue blood to turn red, and we block air from getting to the lungs while observing the color of blood, then the blood should stay blue. In fact, this is what Lower observed. So the hypothesis is supported. The results suggested that blood's contact with air in the lungs is necessary for a color change. Without air, no color change. But this may not be the whole story. Maybe the color change requires the blood to be flowing through the lungs while being exposed to air. Perhaps something else in the lungs contributes to the color change. In other words, contact with air might be necessary, but not enough for the color change. Lower anticipated this problem, and so set out to do another experiment. If contact with air alone is enough for blue blood to change color, and blue blood is mixed with air outside the body, then the blood should turn red. And sure enough, that's exactly what he found. Same as predicted, hypothesis is supported. It seemed unlikely that the blood went through the lungs just for the sake of a color change. More likely, there was some physiological purpose to the journey. Lower found that a suffocated animal died, and while suffocated, blood did not turn red on its passage through the lungs. It seemed natural to infer that the substance in the air necessary for life was the same substance as that which changed the color of blood. Nevertheless, further experiments were needed to confirm this identity. Today we know that red blood cells absorb oxygen from the air in the lungs. Red blood cells are filled with proteins called hemoglobin that temporarily bind and hold oxygen. When oxygen binds to these proteins, they change color slightly. This explains the blood's color change as it travels through the lungs. So let's pause with this diagram to see what's happening here. Here we have a cross section of an air sac in the lung. So this wall here would be lung cells. And we've sliced the through the lung to make a cross section of the lung. So these are little air chambers, air sacs, where inhaled air accumulates here. Now the air that we inhale has a higher concentration of oxygen. And it's this oxygen that is going to move from the lung space here 
through the wall of the lung, through the wall of the capillary, and into red blood cells. Now inside red blood cells are proteins called hemoglobin, and when oxygen binds to those hemoglobin proteins, that causes the color change. So what we're seeing here is a capillary in the lung. We see blue blood is turning red on its passage through the lungs. Now recall that the wall of a capillary uh, is made of cells, capillary cells, and they form uh, hollow spaces through which the blood cells are traveling. So in the lungs, the blood is turning from blue to red as it picks up oxygen from inhaled air. By contrast, the blood sent around to the body, so the left ventricle of the heart is going to pump the blood to the body, that blood, which has just picked up oxygen, that blood, when it reaches body capillaries, is going to give up its oxygen. And when it gives up its oxygen, it will turn blue again. So we, we have the reverse process happening in the body tissues than occurred in the lungs. In the lungs, the blue blood is picking up oxygen, that turns it red, and then in the body tissues, in those tiny capillaries, the red blood that's carrying oxygen will give up its cargo of oxygen to body cells, thus turning blue again. And then that blue blood will travel through the veins back to the heart. And you'll remember the veins have those one-way valves to keep the blood moving back to the heart. So we have the color change happening in the lungs from blue to red and everywhere else in the body from red to blue. Every cell in the body is close enough to a capillary to get a steady supply of oxygen. And so the function of red blood cells is to deliver oxygen to body cells. The blood also transports metabolic waste in the form of carbon dioxide back to the lungs for exhalation. And if we return to this picture, we'll see here CO2 picked up from body cells is moving out of the blood into the lung space for exhalation. So what modern uh, biologists uh, came to the conclusion that the function of the lungs, the purpose of breathing, was to do gas exchange. Right, so uh, oxygen is being absorbed and carbon dioxide is being expelled. And so we call this gas exchange. This diagram then shows us this dual circulation system with a, uh, an emphasis on the uh, color change of blood. So here again we have the pump. In the center of the diagram here we have the right side of the heart is going to be pumping blue blood that is, it's low in oxygen content, to the lungs in order to pick up oxygen. The blood changes color to red, comes back to the left side of the heart. The left side of the heart is going to pump the blood through arteries out to the body tissues. It's in the capillaries where the blood will change from red back to blue. As the blood gives up its cargo of oxygen and the blood picks up carbon dioxide waste from body cells. That carbon dioxide waste in the blood is uh, transported back to the heart, and you'll recall the valves, the one-way valves in the veins, keep the blood moving towards the heart, where the right side will pump the blood, the blue blood containing a lot of carbon dioxide, back to the lungs. The CO2 then is exhaled with a new uh, quantity of oxygen picked up by the blood. Now cells require oxygen to do important chemistry in the mitochondria. Mitochondria complete the metabolism of glucose. When the chemical bonds of glucose are broken, energy is released and stored in the chemical bonds of ATP molecules. ATP molecules carry just the right amount of energy needed to drive chemical reactions in the cell. By breaking apart a glucose molecule, mitochondria convert one large quantity of energy into many smaller but more usable quantities of energy. The waste products of glucose metabolism are carbon dioxide and water molecules. Cells must prevent the buildup of waste molecules within their cytoplasm. Carbon dioxide leaves the cell, travels through the capillary cell wall, and into the blood to be transported back to the lungs and exhaled. Water molecules are also lost during exhalation, an unavoidable consequence of getting rid of carbon dioxide. We have now arrived at a much more satisfactory explanation for the function of breathing. Breathing exchanges oxygen for carbon dioxide.
Cells need oxygen to produce energy, and they must get rid of carbon dioxide waste. Anaximenes was correct that air has a life-giving substance. It is oxygen. The respiratory and circulatory systems of animals ensure that all body cells have a steady supply of oxygen and reliable waste removal.